Greeting the ocean. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. As my friend, my brother, my colleague in the ministry, Pastor Jim has introduced me. Again, I'll reintroduce myself. I'm Roman Kone, a leading pastor of Victory Christian Center Church in Basel Beach. It's my great honor this morning to come and be part of your worship today. Amazing church. Wonderful worship atmospheres in this place. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, I feel it. Even in the first service, I felt it. Thank you for welcoming us and allowing us to be part of you this morning. And before I share the word of God, I'd wish to, to introduce my wife to you. I came with my wife, Joyce. Please, Mama, can you please stand up? Thanks. Been married to her for 22 years now with the blessing of very few African family children. We have four children, small, small family. <laughs> very small. <laughs> In my tribe, if you get four, they say you are unfortunate. You are not fruitful, so we have gone for. <laughs> and uh, wonderful to have these 20, 22 years with her. I'm so glad I met Pastor Jimmy years ago, that he came for a visit from America just to looking for what God had for him as far as his destiny and purpose of God for him was very concerned. He came to Tanzania, and through my friend who was also was a missionary, Pastor Roger Q. Kendall, he came to my office, he introduced me, and ever since we met, we loved each other, and it's been an exciting time, even when he moved to Tanzania, to come and take over this church. We've been working alongside as friends, and uh, you know, friends sharpens, the iron sharpens the other iron, and working together with him has been so growing time and a moment of excitement and joy as we serve together the purposes of God in our lives. And I love him, Jimmy, so much. I love him so much. He's one of the people who is doing amazing, outstanding work in the, in the country, and particularly in the city of Dar es Salaam. And seeing this church, I've been working very close to this church ever since Pastor Porter was here, and... Um, and uh, seeing how fast it is really growing is amazing. And uh, this is a proof that uh, there's a hand of God. There's a purpose of God in this work. And uh, we keep praying for you. Amen. Amen. We keep praying for you, upholding you in all what you're doing here in the city of Dar es Salaam. So, so exciting and we're blessed. Also, my sister, Pastor Pam, thank you so much. Can we appreciate how wonderful work? Pam, thank you. Thank you for all what you're doing here. I know what it is when the senior pastor is not there, but uh, cutting the weight and uh, bearing all the things on his behalf. Uh, me as a pastor, I've been doing this work for many years. I can, I can relate to what you're experiencing and uh, wanted to honor you, respect you, and uh, thank you for what you're doing. By the way, it's our birthday today. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Pam, happy birthday to you. We love you Pam and God bless. And uh, I'm also happy that I'm knowing this church as it is growing right in my eyes. I'm happy because I can't imagine you are three, five years to come. How are you going to be? And I'll say I was part of them when they, was in the, when they were still in the little theater in, I don't know, this place is in Kocheni or Masaki, whatever. I will be at one of the people testifying that I was part of them and I'm glad to know you and how God is doing great things among you. This morning I'm sharing on persistence. I'm sharing on persistence. That's the, the message which the Lord has, has kept in my heart as, as he wants to share, as I want to share to you this morning. And um, in our church, we have a culture, and uh, bear with me, when we read the word of God, we usually ask people to stand up because we say, now God wants to speak to people. 
And in honor of him, we all rise up. Can you do it a little bit? Sorry for disturbance. And go with me in the book of Hebrews chapter number 12. Chapter number 12. And I'll read the first four verses. The first four verses I'm reading from New King James Version in the name of Jesus Christ. This is what the author writes here. He says, therefore, we are, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us. Let us run with the endurance. Can we all say again, endurance? endurance. Again, endurance. endurance. Let us run with endurance the rest that is before us. Look, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Can we say endured the cross? Yes, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God. Let me stop there for a while, and let's pray before we go into the Word. Father, I want to thank you again for this wonderful time that we have as a church, as a congregation, to come to you and listen to what you have for us. I pray, Father, uh, as I'll be sharing your word, I will be the instrument in your own hand. You, you use me, Father, to speak to someone who is here this morning, discouraged, disappointed with the situations and circumstances going on in his life. Father, I'm standing here, Father. I humble myself, bowing before you and expecting you yourself, Father, to be speaking and touching people's lives. I pray these things with great faith in you, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And God's people, help me say amen to the Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated in your wonderful chairs? Hallelujah. This passage we are reading here, it springs from the, the previous chapter, chapter number 11. Chapter number 11 speaks about the people who walked by faith, trusting the Lord in the difficult situations and circumstances. People who went struggles in lives. People who went through pains in lives, like you and me. But yet, when they came out of their seasons of struggles and pains, it wasn't a, lose, a loss for them. It was winning and victories and triumph for them. And I have some things which inspires me as I read these verses we just read. But in verse number two, it speaks about Jesus. It speaks about Jesus, that Jesus, he himself had to endure, had to endure the race, had to endure the race, though it was hard for him because he, the Bible says in verse number two, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the great joy set before him endured the cross. The cross wasn't an easy thing, wasn't a pleasant thing. I believe it was a pain for experience. It was, it, it, was, it was a type of a curse. Curse the one who is at the, at the, hanging at the cross. But Jesus, beside all the pains and beside all the things which he had to go through, the Bible says that he saw a joy which was set before him. And what was his joy? I believe his joy was... It was when he was saying that you and me in 2018, like today, will be sitting in this place, washed by his blood, redeemed by his grace, proclaiming that we are the true disciples of Jesus Christ. That was his joy. He was excited to see that there's some people, generations and generations to come, who now come to a, a relationship with him by faith because of what he was doing. Let me say, if we, even if we take the people in chapter number 11, even when we read about them, I understand that it wasn't easy for them. It was painful. It was a struggle. It was difficult. It was so hard for them. But in the midst of all these difficulties and struggles of life, 
as far as standing in their faith and the calling of God for them was very concerned. They endured. They persisted. They moved by faith, trusting God that will really, in the end, towards the end, at last, giving them the victories they were hoping, believing, expecting, and waiting for. And the same God who worked with the people, the people in Hebrews 11, the people of faith, the same God who worked with those people, he's the same God who is with you and with me as well. I don't know to whom I might be speaking to this morning, but I know we all here, we are into something, or we just came out, out of something, or we are about to be in something. Something which is painful, something which is too hard for us to bear it, but I have a word that through the grace of God, you will be able to come out victoriously. It shall not consume you, it shall not put you completely to fail. You come out victoriously and God is with you into the whole process you are going through. And I believe as we share this word of inspiration to you, God is even doing something in your heart. Can you say amen to Jesus Christ? Amen. And the persistence to me means endurance. It means perseverance. It means determination. And it also means commitment. That I'm committed to this thing. I will persevere to the end. I'm determined to see these things come to, it, to its true, to, to its true and complete success and fruitfulness. That's the success which I believe all of us God is destined to have in our lives. And I would take some Bible characters, some Bible examples to to inspire you and me and to encourage you and me. The first person I want to pick up is Abraham. In chapter number 12, God speaks to Abraham when he's in the Uri of Chaldean that I want you to leave your family, to leave everything here, and you go to a place which I will show you. You go to a place which I'll show you. And this is very difficult for modern people, for people like you and me. Because God doesn't give all the specifications, all the details to him. More than just say, go to a place which I just show you. Just go ahead. Pack up everything. Take your wife and Sarah with you. And I'll show you the place as you are moving on. It's very hard to test you for even the people of today. And, and, and Abraham follows instructions from God. And he goes to a place which God had said to him. He had promised him that I'll make you the father of many nations and I will bless you. I'll multiply you as you go there to do what I want you to go in that place. One of the promises which God gave to him, it was to have a son who will be a descendant, a heir, a person who will inherit the promise which God has for him. And to me, it's very challenging. As God is speaking to him in the first time, he was in his retirement age, in the age of 75 years. This is not a time for me to, dislo to, to, to relocate myself to another place. It's a time for me to use the, the small resources I have wisely and slowly as I'm making my retirement, as I'm going to my, the end of my life. But God demands him to go and leave that place and go to another foreign place to now settle there and to do what he's calling him to do. And it, it takes 25 years for him to get that promise of getting Isaac. For him to take to get that promise of now beginning to see that he's becoming a father of many nations. It, it takes 25 years. Now, 25 years, brothers and sisters, is not 25 minutes, it's not 25 days. 25 years is a very long time. Very long time. It needs people who are persistent. Amen? Amen? I understand you're having 40 days of fasting and praying. 40 days of dedicating yourself to God. I encourage you, be persistent to the end of the 40 days. Amen. You shall see a reward towards the end. Amen. And God speaks to him that now I want you to be there for 25 years. Now, to me, this teaches me that the, 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 the persistence to me through Abraham is learning to enjoy the distance between the promise of God and the provisionness of God. 
learning to enjoy the distance between the promise of God and the provisionness of God. Abraham was there in the middle between when God said and between when it shall come to pass. He learned to enjoy that moment. Let me, let me speak to you people of God this morning. That the journey between when God promises something to you and until when God fulfills it. I'm one of the people I've received many prophecies in my life. People, men of God, speaking, speaking to me. We see you this. We, you are going to be this kind of a person. This is your ministry we see. There's something which is ahead of you. But there's that excitement and a joy to all of us when there are these prophetic words coming to us. But there's a journey moving from where you heard the word until when the, the prophecy is coming to be fulfilled. Men of our people, they, they lose heart. They, they don't persist to the end. Somewhere it becomes too hard for them to bear it and they quit, they leave, they run away. I came to preach to you this morning. Never quit. Don't lay things down. Be persistent to the end of the promise of God. In your life. Hallelujah. Be persistent. My wife and I were been in the ministry. Almost all, I married her when I was already in the ministry. So almost all the time we've been in our marriage, we've been in the ministry. It's a long time. We are excited with all what God is doing. But confessing to you honestly, it has been so hard. It's been sometimes a struggle. Yes, there's the joy of seeing what God is doing. But there's that cost, the price we had to pay for us to go there. Listen to me. If it could be easy, everybody could be doing it. What differentiates the winners and the losers is the preparedness to pay the price behind the crown which waits you ahead. I pray that you not give up because of the challenges you are going through, because of the circumstances. Be persistent. There's something great waiting ahead of you, and God is waiting for you to just press on, moving on, and trusting that God will fulfill every promise he has for my life. Can you say amen to Jesus Christ? And it shall come to pass. But to me also, persistence, I get a lesson from Moses. Moses, in the first time, when God now reveals to him that it's time for the children of Israel to leave Egypt and go to their promised land, he did it. He tried. First time he went to see his brothers and sisters there in, the, in their camps, he found a, an Egyptian person fighting a Hebrew person and the way, he, he, the way he, he decided to resolve the problem, it was to kill an Egyptian person. Maybe to prove to his fellow Hebrew that I am a servant of God. I'm totally displeased with how these people are treating you. Buried him in the ground and they went back. And next day he's coming to the camp. He finds now the Hebrew people are fighting. And as they are fighting, he's trying to resolve their problem. And they're telling him that we saw you yesterday killing an Egyptian person. Don't do to us like what you did to an Egyptian person. And in fact, if you carefully study in Exodus chapter number 3, entire, entire chapter, you realize they are now telling him that who placed you to be our ruler and the prince on us? It's like they are questioning the job he's doing. For some of us, if they begin to question what we're doing and we think we're doing them with the right motive, with the good intentions, and we know exactly that this is what is supposed to be done. Many of us, we can say, it's over. I'm running away from the ocean because they don't trust me. Me, this is not my church. But that he was into Moses. When God appears to him in the unconsumed fire, and it speaks to him that I want you to go to a place. You did it in a wrong way. You performed, you, you did it in a, in a not, not appropriate way. You did a mistake. I want you to go and restart it again. But with more wisdom and carefulness. With more of my personal revelation on you. Moses, 
obeyed God. And he went to restart it again. And many of our people, because of your past mistakes, because of your past things, which you did not do them right, you think it is over with you. Yes, it can be over with your boss, with your husband, with your wife, with people around you. But God is God of the second chances all the time. Amen. Can you say amen to Jesus Christ? Amen. He just wants to speak to you and you obey him. And you say, God, I'm obeying. I'm just obeying. And listen to me. Moses could have been now in a church. He would have been having all his pictures in all the police stations. Wanted by police. Wanted by police. Wanted by police. But regardless of all those situations, he said, I'm ready. As long as God says, I'm going to start again. Some of you are about to run your jobs, your businesses, afraid of your, you, of your boss. You're about to resign. You know, quitting and quitting, sometimes it becomes a habit for someone. And it lowers your self-esteem. And it can make it to be a way of your life. I wanted to preach to someone. Go back to a place you made a mistake. And do it with more wisdom and the revelation from God. The I am that I am revealed to Moses is going to be with you. And it shall come to pass. It will work out for you for the glory of God. Can you say amen to Jesus Christ? The last person I want to talk about is Noah. Noah. If you, if you read from chapter number 5 up to chapter number 10, it speaks about more in the book of Genesis. Chapter number 5, he says, when he was in the age of 500 years old, that's when God gave him a project which will take him 120 years. To me, let me be a human being like any other human being. This is not the right time for me. <laughs> this, no. God, you mean me? No, thank you, God. Give me some, something else. Don't give me this assignment. And he said to me, he was doing a crazy project. He's too old, and it is going to take 120 years. And he, God instructs him to build an ark right in the, in the yard of his, his house, in front of his house. And this generation is going to convince them that the rain is coming. They've never seen a rain for a very long time, if, they, if, if it's not for their entire time. And he's convincing them that what I'm doing here, God has showed me. I believe all the humanity were laughing at him. I believe all the humanity were mocking him. Have you ever been in a situation, you have this vision, something you're con convinced in your spirit that God wants you to go and do it, and people, they begin to laugh at you. Are you serious? Are you not crazy? Is this, are you okay? But listen to me. When we talk about persistence, is when you can cope up with all the mockeries of people. You can cope up with all the laughings people are making for you. But deep inside of you, trust that this I heard from God is going to work out successfully. It was the voice from God. This is God. And I'm obeying the voice of God. Many of our people, many, especially the younger generation, they, don't want, they want to be superstars all the time. They want to be seen. They are smart. They are good. But if you are talking about the vision, the assignments from God, listen to me. You'll go through a time of people laughing at you. If you want every time to be clapped hands, people slapping at your shoulders, you, you, you better rethink about your destiny. There'll be a time people will be pointing fingers on your face and say, you're not serious. Shut up. Sit down. This is not true. I gave, I gave a testimony in the first service. I said, when we were buying our property in Bay's Beach, it was a 300 million t-shirts. By then, it was like 10 years ago. That was a lot of money. I, my wife and I, we do the ministries in the universities and the youth people and the young people. So they don't have that much money. So one of the the person, I up to today, I love him, I respect him. He's a real man of God. He's a true man of God. He called me in his office. That's the good thing when you begin to pass it when you are too young. Because people, they know you're a kijana, so they can say anything. He called me in his office and he said, young man, 
Dear pastor, you began very well your ministry, but now you are beginning to ruin it yourself. This, what you are saying in the church, cannot work in this church. The church is too small, and your people don't have money. You are claiming that you should have the money to buy the property. So he warned me, he said, don't do it. Here I had a word from God. When I saw that land, I was in fasting of three days, talking to God, and God spoke to me, and he said, my son, this property we are I have given it to you. This is for you. I had the word from God, and this, this is a word of a wise person. I'm telling you, is a wise man. The challenge is, should I listen to this long life experienced person or should I obey the voice of God which is contrary to my resources? My resources, they're not matching with the project which God is calling me to do. The people, the human resources, the financial resources and all these things, am I going to depend and trust the Lord to provide or am I going to be tempted to listen to people. And I chose a risking place of trusting God. If you want to be clapped hands every time, you become a performer, an artist. <laughs> Hello? But if you choose to follow the ways of God, be prepared for some mockeries in your life. They'll see like you've never been to university. They say it's like he's not civilized. Let's say like he's not thinking properly. He's not analytical. But when you trust God, God is faithful with the people who put their trust in him. I'm preaching to you this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm preaching to you this morning. Learn to trust the Lord. I, I gave, a, an, I gave a, an inspiration story of joy in the first service. Let me in this second give you a Tanzanian story. Some of you, you know, in 1968, a Olympian marathon ran a Tanzanian by the name of Stephen Okwari, Johnny Okwari, who went to Olympic in Mexico, and he was running the race, and he injured his knee. And he, he was late to be in the, in the end of the race, one hour after the winning prize was given, and the reporters, journalists, was asking him, for what are you coming here? What are you coming to do here? Everybody's left. Why are you here? And Johnny Stephen O'Quarry says, my country did not just bring me to begin the race. They sent me to come and finish the race. <laughs> and you know what? O'Quarry is the most remembered person than the one who got the prize. You did not just begin the race. You must bring it to the end. Run to the end of your race. I don't know what is happening in your business. I don't know what is happening in your marriage. I don't know what is happening in your family. But go to the end of your race. And God is going to bless you. And God is causing the victories to follow you because he orders the steps of the righteous people. God is going to be with you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be with you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit of God. And you say amen to Jesus Christ.